three, two, one. It's the Puff and Steph podcast. It's Puff, it's Steph, and it's Friday. Mm, last day of the week. Mm, Friday. Mm, last day of the week. Woo! <laughs> I like it. That was good. That was good. <laughs> Hey everyone, uh, happy Friday, if you couldn't tell, that's what day it is. Uh, today's show brought to you by Freisinger Hyundai, right in the price, right on the pike. Have pain, anxiety, can't sleep? Well, you can meet with a certified wellness consultant, American Shaman of PA. Life is better with the feather, hempishealth.com. We are inside the American Shaman of PA studios. Steph, I have not told you this story yet. I was waiting, I don't know why. But somebody tried to scam me last weekend. Really? Yeah. So, I had this person who was a Facebook friend, okay? Not just a Facebook friend. Like, they said, I believe, they lived in Halifax, I want to say. So, it's like, (gasps) and like 20 other of my friends were mutual friends. And I was like, okay. So, um, this woman hit me up and said, hey, do you have Cash App? And I went... No, I don't use Cash App. I don't trust Cash App. Um, I thought she was asking me because she was like wondering. I'm kind of like, I have a lot of brides that I'm doing weddings for. So I didn't know if she was a bride that owed me like a deposit or something like that. Right. So I was like, no, I only use this and that and that. And she's like, oh, okay. And then didn't talk to me for a couple of days. So this happened like in the middle of last week. And then out of nowhere, she's like, hey, did you hear about our deal? Now, mind you, again, this is a woman who seems to have, you know, a a central Pennsylvania address. Okay. She has mutual friends. Like I said, about 20. So I, I was like, what are you talking about? I thought maybe then it was someone who might be interested in advertising on the podcast right so i'm just you know i'm just in my head wondering what she's talking about she goes well we're running a special right now that if you give ten dollars you get a hundred if you do twenty five dollars you get 250 and she went through this list and it goes all the way up of like if you if you cash app this group a hundred dollars, you get a thousand dollars back. Sure, that sounds that sounds realistic. Really, says the <laughs> girl who's gonna fall for the secret sister. Okay, that's different. That seemed real. How? Okay, that actually made sense. It did make sense. Remember, we talked about but that. But it kind of did. Though. No, it didn't. If At you, first if, glance. No, if you send one present to thirty-six people, you get thirty-six presents in return. It doesn't make sense. It did in the moment, but anyway. So back so, to you. Okay, so. <laughs> What this is called is a money flip scam. So again, for anyone who may be listening who's thinking about doing this, don't. But let me explain to you how this works. Normally, people have their guard up as well they should because this seems fake. So they'll go, trust me, send me $2. And in the next couple of days or in the next few hours, you'll get $4 back in your cash app. So you do it and you get that $4 back. And you're like, weird. And then they're like, yeah, no, trust me. Send me $5. You'll get 10 back. Or whatever. And you do. And you do. And you're like, okay, this is legit. So then they're like, all right, now send me 50 and you'll get 100 or whatever. And you do. And then they never talk to you again. That's shocking. It's what they do. So they set you up with like smaller dollar amounts. And then when you trust them enough to send them a little bit more money. They'll, they'll just ghost you. They gone. And yeah. <gasps> wow. And because it's Cash App, it's kind of like it's, you just can't get your money back. Right. And that's why they use Cash App and not things like Venmo or PayPal. So Cash App's a little more sketch. Yeah. Okay. That you know what that checks out because a guy randomly and I don't even know who he is sent me a message on Snapchat recently asking if I was looking for a sugar daddy and he wanted to pay me through Cash App. And I was like, is that legit? Um, no, he might so. just actually be looking for a sugar daddy. Because he didn't ask you for any money. He probably just asked for like... No, he wanted to be my sugar daddy. Right. Yeah. So that's not... So he wanted not, to use Cash App. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, so that's the if sketchy. money's just going one way, then that's fine. Good for you. Just send him some pictures of your feet or something. Well, he wasn't looking for feet pictures. I don't... I don't... That's not the impression I got. 
but I was like, what's with Cash App? So I guess it's a little bit of a sketch platform. A little bit, but yeah. uh, so how's it going? Things are, no, it's good. I'm rolling in it, man. Nice. <laughs> just, just bought a new car. Things are good. <laughs> nice. Congrats on your new relationship. <laughs> so yeah, people, um, the thing is, is that they wouldn't do this if it didn't work. Right? So it is working with some people. And I, this this person, again, I I don't know. Like, I blocked them from Facebook. I messed with, with the person for a while, though. See, that's, you got to have fun with it. I absolutely messed with them. Like, big time messed with them. It was really funny. I was like, no, this is a scam. No, it's not. I'm like, are you sure? And they're like, yes. And I'm like, well, I don't have cash app. Can I write you a check? <laughs> if I write you a check for... I said, if I write you a check for $1,000, how much will I get back? They're like 10000 I was like, oh my God. So, so okay. Or I said, if I give you $1,000, how much will I get back? They said, 10 I said, can I write you a check? And they said, no. Then they wanted me to go to the store and buy $1,000 worth of uh, eBay gift cards. Yes. They I told, got that they one told, They told me to do that. And I was like, oh... Okay, I'll do that. I said, I just stole some money from my mom. I have 5000 How much can I get for that? They're like 50000 I was like, oh, my God. So the, that's per, And then finally, I'm just like, they're like, what's the number? I'm like, I'm not giving you a number, you idiot. And they're like swearing at me. Mother, bleep you, bleep you, bleep you. Yes, you're the one in the wrong here. Yeah. Oh, my so, gosh. So people, sending people to money on Cash App will not gain you any type of return. You'll just lose money. All right? Lesson of the day. Don't do it. It's fun while it lasted, but I'm I'm done. I'm done uh, messing with that person. Speaking of uh, scammers, Hong Kong police have arrested a man after a 90 year old woman lost around 32 million dollars in a scam. No. The woman contacted police in March and told them she had made a total of 10 payments after scammers told her her identity had been used in a criminal activity in mainland China. Woman said she'd received a call last August from someone who claimed to work in law enforcement. Then a man who pur uh, purported to be a mainland law enforcement official visited her home and gave her a cell phone with which to communicate them with. The woman then made a series of transactions to two bank accounts as instructed. Police arrested a 19-year-old man uh, late March and he's been released on bail and scheduled to report back to court in April. So now... Most of the time, 90 year olds don't have Cash App, but I, just, I put those two stories together just because, you know, it just felt right. It's so cruel that people target old people. And they do. That makes and me and so the thing sad. is, like, it's a good thing older people don't have Cash App because you do have older people who go, like, well, they told me to go to the store and buy them a bunch of Target gift cards. Like, you really think that the IRS, because you owe thirty thousand dollars in back taxes, is willing to give you a break by sending them five thousand dollars in Target gift cards? I know. Just send me five thousand dollars in Target gift cards. If anybody at Rite Aid asks, they're for your grandkids. <laughs> yeah, that's not sketchy at all. You know, this happened to me when I had first started with the senators in twenty twenty, and I got um, an email from our boss there, Kevin, and. Like, I was still new and, like, you know, trying to make a good impression and do a good job. And the email address was seemingly legit. Right. And I remember thinking, oh, he's asking me to help with something. Like, okay, I got to do it right. And I was like, yeah, what do you need? Because it was like, can you do me a favor? I remember this. Do you remember yeah, that? Yeah. And then, it, and then they started talking about, like, gift cards and stuff. And I was like, oh, it's a scam. Because I legitimately thought he was asking for my help. And I was like, oh, yes, no. Yes, I'm going to be the model employee. What do you need, sir? What can I do for you? And then, yeah, it was a scam. I'm sorry. Didn't I didn't out. fall for it, though, but but I got excited. So I guess basically the moral of this show so far is just, you know, if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. Um, if you're curious about anything, feel free to call a family member. Um, or, you know, if you're really worried, call the police and they'll tell you it was a scam. And you remember, sending someone $10 on Cash App isn't going to net you 100 I'm sorry. It's just how it goes. Coming up, I don't really know why they thought they'd get away with this. It's the Puffin' Steph Podcast.
Freisinger Hyundai, a refreshingly different car buying experience. Freisinger Hyundai dedicates itself to customer satisfaction. From the initial sale to the maintenance you'll need during the life of the vehicle, Freisinger Hyundai treats you like family. Check out their large selection of both the latest Hyundai lineup to certified pre-owned and used vehicles. Come see how Freisinger Hyundai drives the difference and tailors the purchase process to your needs. Right on the price, right on the pike. Freisinger Hyundai, 6115 Carlisle Pike Mechanicsburg, 717 766 8422. During this time, many are out of work and struggling just to get by. It's good to know that your friends at Capital City Buy and Sell in Harrisburg have your back. If you're in need of extra help during the pandemic, you can pawn or sell unwanted or unneeded items that you may have laying around your house, including jewelry, electronics, tools, musical instruments, and a whole lot more. Capital City Buy and Sell is open seven days a week, and they're always paying cash. Plus, they have low pawn interest and terms if you aren't quite ready to say goodbye to your item just yet. Capital City Buy and Sell, 3517 Walnut Street, Harrisburg. Online at harrisburgpapawn.com. Great news, everyone. American Shaman of PA's doors are back open for normal operations, and they're ready to bring you the much-needed relief that you've been waiting for. They care about their customers, and their customers keep coming back for more. Steve K says, American Shaman products drastically decrease my back pain and relieve my stress in just one month. Thank you. Stop by your local American Shaman of PA store for a free CBD sparkling water and free samples. Find their locations and more at HempusHealth.com. Do you love saving money but hate buying one of those coupon books filled with places you'll never go to? Well, here comes Quick Save Coupons to save the day. Quick Save Coupons is an app where you can find savings for restaurants, stores, and experiences that you will love. And here's the best part. It's free. No big coupon books to buy. No websites to give your information to. Quick Save Coupons will show you all of the savings in your area right on your phone. Just go to Google Play or the App Store and download the Quick Save Coupons app. Then start saving money on many of the places you already go to. Now back to the Puff and Steph podcast. So there's this owner of a magnificent five million dollar mansion, like property in Fort Lauderdale, and uh, he discovered trespassers on the grounds last Saturday. Many trespassers. A large wedding was being set up. Um, these two people had invited their whole family to the ceremony and reception at their dream home and estate. It's this upscale Florida suburb right outside Fort Lauderdale. Only they don't own the property. Never got permission to have the wedding at the property. Their online wedding invitation said um, they referred to themselves as the royal couple and promised a reception that featured a red carpet cocktail hour. Stop. (laughs) So that was going to be on Saturday, and then they're going to be followed by brunch on Sunday. The actual owner is a guy named Nathan. He lives in a small house on the property. He called police who ordered all the people there that were setting up for the wedding to leave. Several months ago, the guy um, who was going to have the wedding had posed as a potential buyer. And toured the estate. At the time, he asked if they could hold a wedding there, but he was told no. The owner of the property, because he didn't live in the big house, he lived in a house, like a smaller house, that be like you can't really see from the road. The owner of the property thinks that they toured the house to find out if anyone was living on the property. Didn't think that there was anyone living on the property, so thought that they could get away with just showing up, having a wedding there, <laughs> and then leaving. And leaving, and they thought nobody would find out. Nobody would. No one's going to know. No one's, who's going to know? Clean getaway. No one's going to know. No one's going to know. <laughs> no. How would anybody possibly know? Well, okay. So, their plan wasn't that bad. Think about it. If this Nathan guy, who owns a property, didn't live there. He lived off-site. I mean, rich people move around all the time. Maybe he lived in another state. Maybe he lived in another country. Right. He might have been in his winter house or his summer house. Right. Their plan was actually not that bad. No, it wasn't. If you didn't know that the that the guy was living on, on, on site and he wasn't, and he was living someplace else, this could have gone off without a hitch. Yeah. Except for when it came time to like get in the house. Like... Where are the bathrooms? Oh, we got porta potties. You're not letting people use the house? No. The house is completely locked? Yeah. 
It was just the grounds. The house is in the background. So again, right? I don't know, call these wedding squatters or something. Um, the the idea. I don't want to get because it's a, it's a criminal activity. It's trespassing, right? But and I don't want to give criminals credit, but. They were close to being pretty smart about this. Yeah, they really were. As much as, again, I don't want to give them credit. They were close. And imagine if they had gotten away with it, the amount of money they would have saved not having to pay for a venue. Especially one that was apparently their dream venue. Right. Yeah. Good try, guys. Good try. Yeah. Uh, A hospital employee in Italy is accused of skipping work on full pay for 15 years. The man was a civil servant. He was assigned to a job at a hospital. In 2005. What does civil servant mean? Work for the government. Okay. Okay. Uh, It was at this point where he stopped going to work. His manager noticed and filed a disciplinary report against him. But the manager soon retired and her successor never knew about the absent worker. He was reportedly paid the equivalent of about $538,000 over the last 15 years that he never showed up for work. He's now being investigated for fraud, extortion, abuse of office. Wow. Because this is government money. Right. This is Italian taxpayer money. Honestly, again, you hate to give the criminal credit, but that's kind of amazing <laughs> that he got away with it. Right? Um, yeah. I mean, the timing had to work out just right with his boss leaving. Yeah, he didn't know... So he probably just got the job and was like, whatever, they're going to fire me. I hate that job. And then the, the paychecks just kept coming. Right. If you had a job that... You're so honest. I don't know. If you had a job that you hated and you were going to quit and you just took some time off and they just kept paying you, how long before you would... you do you give all the money back? I would. I would tell them after a time or two. I would be so afraid of that, like getting found out with like fifteen taxes years later, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't. I well, couldn't. no, he was getting paid as an employee, so taxes were coming out. Right, but I he would owed be a, them the money though because he wasn't working. Well, right, I would be. I would just be so scared of getting like found out. Yeah, just looking over your shoulder. Yeah, no, I couldn't live like that. I mean, I don't know a whole lot about this guy, but I think he got another job. So he's working one job, getting paid for both of them though. Wow. He was rolling in it there for 15 yeah. years. Talk about a sugar daddy. That, that hospital was his sugar daddy. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, how come this stuff never happens to me? A Massachusetts family hired a professional treasure hunter to investigate decades-old rumors of money hidden in their home. Uh, this guy was hired to look for money that was supposedly concealed in the 1950s. The family previously hired carpenters to look inside the walls and underneath the floors in the past, but no cash was ever discovered. Uh, his name is Keith Wiley. He took his metal detector into the family's attic and it signaled there was something underneath the floorboards. A look with his, uh, little camera, you know, you see his little endoscope cameras with the, you know, the, the, you know what I'm talking about, right? They're like a, like, I don't say a string, but they're like a, yeah, a yeah, little, yeah. Yeah, rope-like thing with a camera on them. Uh, revealed a metal box under the floor. They pulled up the floorboards, opened up the box and discovered $46,000 in cash. Wow. It was wrapped in original bank straps dating into the 1950s. The bills were dated 34, 35, and 50. Uh, $46,000 in 1958 was the equivalent, is the equivalent of about forty-two or $421,000 in 2021 with inflation and everything. He believes the person who left the cash behind was someone who grew up during the Great Depression. The family has not yet decided what to do with the discovered cash. They own the house. The cash is theirs. All right, Steph, you can't spend it on boring stuff. You come into $46,000. What do you do? See, with that amount of money, I'm not even going to pay off student loans. Like, no. Because that wouldn't even pay them off. Okay. You know? Yeah. So what's the point? Um, I like, I like my your brother, attitude. I do. Well, thank you. My brother would yell at me for saying that because he'd say, you should still put it towards student loans. Shut up, Michael. What do you know? <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I would definitely adopt more dogs. What? I like my car. I am ready to get an SUV, though. I think I'd probably get an SUV. An SUV? Because I paid my car off, so now I'm just kind of driving it till it dies. Yeah, all right. So I'd get an SUV. All right, we'd pay for it full in cash. 
Yeah, that would be nice to not have a car payment. Mm-hmm. I want one of those uh, Hyundai two Tucsons. <laughs> Tucson. I know. Tucson. Yep. Uh, what would you do? Oh man, I don't know. I there's like two cameras I want to buy. Uh, or, of course. Of course, I would do that. You already uh, have a plan. Um, probably go on a nice vacation. Um, my car is broken, so I'd fix that. You know how I, I hit that frozen snowbank the last time it snowed? Ah, uh, that's right. Yeah, that's going to cost some money. So I'd probably fix that so I don't look like I'm going around hitting people. Um, yeah, that's about it. I'd have some money left over, though. That vacation would be bomb, though. All right, uh, coming up in just a couple of minutes. Man, there's some smart people out there. It's the Puffin Steph Podcast. Freisinger Hyundai, a refreshingly different car buying experience. Freisinger Hyundai dedicates itself to customer satisfaction. From the initial sale to the maintenance you'll need during the life of the vehicle, Freisinger Hyundai treats you like family. Check out their large selection of both the latest Hyundai lineup to certified pre-owned and used vehicles. Come see how Freisinger Hyundai drives the difference and tailors the purchase process to your needs. Right on the price, right on the pike. Freisinger Hyundai, 6115 Carlisle Pike Mechanicsburg, 717 766 8422. During this time, many are out of work and struggling just to get by. It's good to know that your friends at Capital City Buy and Sell in Harrisburg have your back. If you're in need of extra help during the pandemic, you can pawn or sell unwanted or unneeded items that you may have laying around your house, including jewelry, electronics, tools, musical instruments, and a whole lot more. Capital City Buy and Sell is open seven days a week, and they're always paying cash. Plus, they have low pawn interest and terms if you aren't quite ready to say goodbye to your item just yet. Capital City Buy and Sell, 3517 Walnut Street, Harrisburg. Online at harrisburgpapawn.com. Great news, everyone. American Shaman of PA's doors are back open for normal operations, and they're ready to bring you the much-needed relief that you've been waiting for. They care about their customers, and their customers keep coming back for more. Steve K says, American Shaman products drastically decrease my back pain and relieve my stress in just one month. Thank you. Stop by your local American Shaman of PA store for a free CBD sparkling water and free samples. Find their locations and more at HempusHealth.com. Do you love saving money but hate buying one of those coupon books filled with places you'll never go to? Well, here comes Quick Save Coupons to save the day. Quick Save Coupons is an app where you can find savings for restaurants, stores, and experiences that you will love. And here's the best part. It's free. No big coupon books to buy. No websites to give your information to. Quick Save Coupons will show you all of the savings in your area right on your phone. Just go to Google Play or the App Store and download the Quick Save Coupons app. Then start saving money on many of the places you already go to. Now back to the Puff and Steph podcast. So uh, NASA, people in NASA, they're really, really, really smart. I don't know if you knew that or not. NASA people, super yeah. smart. I mean, they like shoot rockets to planets. Yeah, they know what they're doing and stuff. Yeah. They logged another um, first on its latest mission to Mars. You know, they have that thing roaming around Mars, taking pictures <gasps> and stuff. That's right. They converted carbon dioxide from the Martian atmosphere into pure breathable oxygen. The Martian atmosphere? Yeah, Martian. Like, what is that? It's Mars. Martian. Like from if you're from Haiti, you're Haitian? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you never heard of the word Martian? Yeah, but I just thought it meant alien. <laughs> no, no, it's Martian atmosphere, like Martian rock. This is Martian. <laughs> like the Looney Tunes character Marvin the Martian. Do you remember him? Yeah, he's like an I, alien. Like, I'm going to get that bunny. Yeah, yeah. he's an alien. Right, but... From Mars? Yeah. Nuh-uh. <laughs> I just thought Martian meant that you were from... Like, oh, you were an alien. So you could be a, a Martian from Jupiter. <laughs> I thought so. Have you ever seen My Favorite Martian? We watched it when I was a kid. It was like a thing we watched as a family. I know I've heard of it, but I don't know. Yeah, it was never real popular. But I just thought that it meant you came from the other galaxy or something. I, I never. And okay. Anyway, back to you. Sorry. No, that's fine. <laughs> I like I like exploring Steph's mind. Does it learn something new? Who knew? So anyway, um, the unprecedented extraction of oxygen, literally out of thin air was achieved Tuesday by an experimental device on board that rover we talked about. In its first activation, the Mars Oxygen Resource Utilization Experiment um, 
produced about five grams of oxygen, equivalent to roughly 10 minutes worth of breathing for an astronaut. It's the first experimental extraction of natural resources from the environment of another planet ever by human beings. These guys are smart. So they set up a giant remote control car to Mars and they got it to create literally out of thin Martian air, Martian air, breathable oxygen. We're going there. I mean, I don't know about you and me, but like we as a, as a race of people, we're going to be in Mars soon. They, they can pull oxygen from the, the Martian air. So we could survive there. Wow, that's cool. I mean, we that's can't really we cool. can't really walk around without like protective gear, but what's to stop us from building a giant bubble? Right. And like and using machines to pump in breathable oxygen. That is so cool. How long does it take to get to Mars? A while. Like a few weeks. I'm going to Google it. I think maybe more, maybe months. I was going to say is it like a year? I think it's yeah, I think it's months. It pops up when you start typing how long does it take? Seven months. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you need you need some decent like vacation time to be able to go to on a trip there, but that'd be cool. And it's coming back too. Oh, true. Yeah. You got to go round trip. So like, I'm gonna need a year and a half off. It's uh 14 months to travel, and then I mean, well, I mean while you're there, you got to spend at least two to three months there. Right. So about a year and a half. But I mean, everyone's wow. working from home. Right. Nowadays, why can't I work from Mars? Yeah, I'm sure they have Wi-Fi up there. How would my company know? Right. Get a hotspot on the spaceship. Yeah, just get a really, I mean, we probably need something better than 5G at that point. I'm probably looking at like, like 7DG. Probably. Something, yeah. Time to stump Steph. Uh, if you're from Mars, what are you? <laughs> just kidding. Uh, in the average <laughs> year, 40% of people say they have done this while on their phone. In the average year, 40% of people say they've done this while on their phone. It's not driving. And it's something you shouldn't be doing while you're on your phone? No, it's just something a lot of us end up having to do, and it's annoying. Showering. Showering on your phone? No. Like, on your phone while you're in the shower? No. Um, it's nothing physical like that, so it's not showering or running or boating or anything like that. <laughs> boating. I don't know. Um, it's something annoying. It's something that we don't want. And we don't want to make that phone call. It's a specific phone call. Oh. It's a bad phone call you have to make? Um, not necessarily, but you dread it normally because it usually takes some time. Um, something adults have to deal with. Yeah. Kids don't really mess with this. Can you do it not on your phone? Or you have to use your phone to do you it. You know, nowadays you can do it off your phone. You can do it on your computer, but most people do it on their phone. I say most, but we're talking about this. So you're calling somebody. Yeah, 40% of people say they've done this while on their phone in, uh, in an average year. Done this while on their phone. So basically what happens is they call a specific person and then this happens. So if you get the person right, you probably get what happens right. Is it someone they know? No, not normally. Someone at some kind of business? Yeah. A bank. Okay, let's call it a bank. Is that right? Well, banks have these people. It could be a bank, it could be another company, but let's just use a bank, for example. They call a bank and they talk to... So can I speak to the manager? No, not the manager. Usually it's a bunch of people in one room. They are... Oh, conference call. No, 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 no. It has nothing to do with work or anything. A bunch of people in one room. Yeah. It's a job. Call center. Okay. Who are... Oh, calling 911. No, no. We're talking banks. Oh, okay. <laughs> you were... We are getting there, and then you're just like, hey, squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> hey, a Martian. Let me go find that thing. All right. No. So, it's a bunch of people in one room. They work in a call center. They are a... Their job title is a... Oh, customer service agent. Okay. Yeah. So, that's part one. Okay. There's a part two to this. While on the phone with this person, what are they doing? 
Oh, it's something they're doing while they're talking to the customer service agent. Yeah. Complaining. Mm, Arguing. There we go. There we go. In an average year, 40% of people say they argue with a customer service representative over the phone. Yeah. I'm surprised that number's not higher. 30% of people surveyed think they are nicer than the average person because they offer to do this for a friend. Something you offer to do for a friend that not everyone offers to do. So you're nicer. Um, does it have to do with money? Like buying them something? Nope. Offer to do this for a friend. Things that friends ask you to do that's annoying. Helping you move. There we go. I knew that one was going to be easier. That's why I gave you the hard one first. Yeah, 30% of people surveyed think they're nicer than the average person because they offer to help their friends move. Well, good for you. I ain't doing it. Yeah, moving's tough. I, I, saw, I saw a meme recently that was like, if you're over 35, pay a mover. Um, it's not worth with it's not worth it to your friends for some Bud Light and pizza, <laughs> which I totally 100% agree. All right, everyone, have a fantastic weekend. Steph will be back with us on Monday, but then you're going to be gone for a while to Florida, so have fun with that, I guess. Thanks. Yeah, but anyway, weekend, enjoy it. See you Monday. Oh, bye. It's the Puffin Steph podcast.